Hello and welcome to the Out of Spec podcast. I'm your host, William. I normally run the YouTube channel Roaming Norway, but today I'm on Out of Spec podcast to talk about Tesla. What would you do if you got a software update to your Tesla Model Y that said, you have now more range available, but you have to pay for it. Would you be happy that you had the ability to pay for a range increase? Or would you be mad that you didn't have the range from the get-go? Well, today we are going to talk about the history of software locked batteries from Tesla. We're going to talk about the news I just mentioned, and we are also going to talk about all the software locked features that we find with other automakers like BMW, like uh, Audi and uh, many other automakers as well. So stay tuned for this new exciting episode of the Autospec podcast. This episode is made possible by the support we get from Fort Collins Kia. If you are in the market for any electric Kia, not only do they never add market adjustments, they will deliver your car to you anywhere in the 48 contiguous states for out-of-spec viewers. More information in the link in the show notes. Tesla is not new to unlocking hardware features with software. They have done so many times before. Not only in locked batteries, which I actually have done before as well, and uh, they have done it at, uh, with rear seat heaters or with acceleration boost. And I'm going to th talk about all those things. Imagine it's winter and your kids are freezing in the back seat. Just open the app and purchase rear seat heaters. And uh, I'm also going to talk about other automakers because uh, I don't think uh, Tesla is necessarily the worst here. So let's talk about the uh, first acceleration boost, which I mentioned. That's uh, just more performance and uh, the rear seat heaters are self-explanatory. There are uh, other automakers that do um, LED matrix, for example. For example, LED matrix is the ability to block out uh, lights on oncoming traffic. For example, Audi does this uh, through a subscription or you can buy it as a software upgrade. Uh, BMW has the rear uh, seat heaters or um, suspension upgrade actually. You can buy performance suspension on some BMW models. And uh, Tesla has, uh, for example, acceleration boost, which is uh, the ability to upgrade the performance of your car over software. Few automakers have gone so far as to actually lock battery capacity behind software. So. We have seen Rivian does, uh, did this with uh, some of their standard range cars, but they never or haven't yet offered a way to unlock it. So that's where the other automakers are different from Tesla so far. As I mentioned, Tesla has done software locked batteries for a long time. They actually did it all the way back in 2016. So before we move on, I'm going to give a short kilowatt hour lesson. And the reason for giving a kilowatt hour lesson is to explain what a kilowatt hour is, uh, just to make sure everyone is on board with that. I'm going to be quick, so if you know this already, just stay tuned. Kilowatt hour uh, is how we describe the size of the battery packs. It is a measure of energy the battery can store and deliver over time. So. An example is, is good to have. So you have a ki uh, 60 kilowatt hour battery. Uh, it can uh, theoretically deliver 60 kilowatts of continuous power for one hour before it is empty. So kilowatts is power, kilowatt hour is stored energy in this example. 60 kilowatts of power is approximately the equivalent to 80 horsepower. So that's the horsepower we talk about. That's uh, kilowatts uh, if you want to use uh, those units. If you use more kilowatts or more horsepower, driving faster, more resistance, you need more horsepower, it will empty faster in faster than one hour. So that's just a quick example of kilowatt hour. So then we are going to move on and we are still going to talk about kilowatt hours. We are going to talk about an early example of software unlock. Let's look at some earlier examples from Tesla. So they had a Model S 70. For $3,250, you could gain an extra five kilowatt hours of energy uh, available or unlock. That means that you could upgrade 
the car from 70 kilowatt hours to 75 kilowatt hours. That's almost nothing really uh, in real life. And $3,250 is a hefty premium for that software unlock. They later did a Model S uh, 60 and the 60D, which had the same uh, size of battery pack originally, which is 75 kilowatt hours. The maximum that you can unlock is always the battery size that's installed in the car, of course. You can't just magically add kilowatt hours from nowhere. So uh, the Model S 60 and the Model X, uh, S 60D <coughs> had as, uh, 60 kilowatt hours available in the battery pack. For $8,500 you could upgrade to uh, unlock 15 kilowatt hours for a total of 75 kilowatt hours. So that's the original, that's the installed battery. So unlock the whole installed battery basically. So that's a, also a pretty hefty price for uh, an increase, but 15 kilowatt hours is a significant upgrade I would say. So let's move over to the news. What's the news? That's old news. 2016 is a long time ago. Tesla has now started offering customers to unlock more of their battery pack uh, with what they call energy boost. You remember I talked about acceleration boost? This time it's energy boost. So not more power, but more energy available in the battery. So this is an offering for the Model Y rear wheel drive within a certain time frame, which I will explain later. This time uh, at a much more reasonable price per kilowatt hour than what I mentioned earlier. It is clear that the battery pack prices have uh, more than halved since 2016 when we look uh, at this and if we look at how Tesla prices kilowatt hours. Anyways, the long range uh, battery that we have seen in the Model Y is typically around 82 kilowatt hours gross capacity. It's uh, a little bit of variations, but I'll mention that later as well. The software locked uh, batteries uh, have uh, been locked down to use around 60 kilowatt hours. So they use 60 kilowatt hours of the 82 kilowatt hours that are available. So that means that around 22 kilowatt hours is uh, unlockable or around 20 kilowatt hours is unlockable in most cases. 20 to 22 kilowatt hours are unlockable. And uh, when I mention the prices now, this is going to sound like a, bar a bargain <laughs> compared to the ones from 2016. But uh, let's get to that. People who have uh, these uh, rear-wheel drive model Ys um, uh, that are eligible for unlocking more range have seen two different price points and two different miles rating. So when they open the, their Tesla app, they go under software, uh, software add-ons, so you can add like driver assistance feature like fully self-driving and an enhanced autopilot and you can add the acceleration boost. Now these people who have the, this specific Model Y will see an energy boost option. Some people see a thousand dollars for 30 miles of range and some people see 50 miles of range for sixteen hundred dollars. So what's the difference? By the way they only see one of those so it's depending on the battery pack they have. So uh, my theory is that one is for the Panasonic battery, which is larger than the LG battery. And when the Panasonic battery is uh, around 82 kilowatt hours gross, the LG battery is around 79 kilowatt hours gross. When you have a larger battery, there will be more range to unlock. That makes sense. Uh, that's my theory. If you have another theory, please leave it in the comments. Uh, because uh, I searched around and I couldn't find any other reason. So, who is this for? Well, I mentioned the Model Y rear wheel drive uh, and it's specifically the, for the US market this uh, software unlock is so far. And that makes sense because the US gets some different Tesla models than Canada, than Europe, than China. It's all different. So. So that makes sense that it's only for the US for now. This specific upgrade is available for uh, the Model Y rear wheel drive, also called the standard range or the non long range because it doesn't have a designation. Some people just call it base Model Y, but there have been many base Model Ys over the years, so it's difficult to know exactly what you have. But this one was sold from October 2023 until May 2024. 
So it's no longer for sale. It was replaced by something called the Tesla Model Y long range rear wheel drive. And we can just assume that this is a rear wheel drive standard Model Y with the whole capacity unlocked. So we are going to move over to an interesting point, which is controversy. Many do not like the approach of locking hardware features behind software. Customers feel like they are unfairly charged for features that their car already has. It gives a more complicated user experience and makes it more difficult to differentiate trim levels uh, of cars. For example, if you buy a standard range uh, Model Y, which is not for sale anymore, but if you bought one and you buy the upgrade, do you now have a long range Model Y or do you have a standard with the long range upgrade? Uh, and um, in addition with the different battery types, it's difficult uh, to know exactly what you have. So it's a little bit confusing. Um, and also the point with unfairly charged. You don't know what, uh, what the Tesla will charge you for, uh, for the future software updates. That's the same with enhanced autopilot and fully self-driving as well. Very much controversy regarding the pricing. Conversely, locking hardware features behind software gives Tesla great cost flexibility and power to differentiate products much faster than if they needed hardware changes. So they can just release a new product from their computer. They don't need to develop new motors. They don't need to develop new badging or new seats and stuff uh, like they do for the Tesla Model 3 performance. That's an expensive car to develop. Uh, but it's much uh, cheaper to just create a new trim level in a price bracket where they want to be uh, competitive. And they can just do so over the air with software updates. So it's easier for Tesla. But is it really better for the consumer? A point for the consumer is that you have the ability to buy a more affordable car. So the Tesla Model Y rear wheel drive was uh, a more affordable electric car. So you could buy the, uh, that one and then you have the option to upgrade later on. That sounds, uh, that sounds, uh, to some people that sounds nice. You can, you don't need a large upfront cost. You can buy a cheaper model and you can see if you have the ability to upgrade it later. So let me just put it this way, just as a discussion point. If you bought a cheap car, would you rather have the option to upgrade it or not? In reality, most people would probably like to at least have the options. So leave your thoughts on that. Is, do you want the option to upgrade later? Or do you want a locked battery that you never can update? There are also arguments of waste of energy since these cars have uh, heavier batteries, batteries carried around. When you can't use the whole battery, you have dead weight basically unless you upgrade uh, by the software upgrade. On the other hand, I don't think Tesla would have made actually any lighter uh, cars because uh, if they make a car that has a 60 kilowatt hour battery instead of the software locked battery, so they have a small battery installed, they usually use something called the LFP chemistry. And the LFP chemistry is uh, actually heavier uh, in weight. So it will, the car would probably weigh exactly the same. Uh, regardless and uh, in that case it wouldn't be kind of considered dead weight but it kind of is so it's a difficult point but uh, Tesla likes to um, likes to use LFP batteries in standard range cars that doesn't have this uh, unlock ability because you fill essentially the weight of the car uh, up and you get the benefits that the LFP batteries have which you can listen to a podcast uh, Francie did on LFP or battery prices, where she will explain uh, LFP batteries and why they are great as well. But they are not relevant to this uh, specific Model Y that I'm talking about today. Another point is the waste of kilowatt hours. So you produce a battery that is 82 kilowatt hours and you only use 60 kilowatt hours of them. If they never buy the software upgrade, isn't that a waste of production capacity for uh, battery cells? You get 22, around 22 kilowatt hours that are actually wasted. They will be, when the car, uh, car's life cycle is finished and the battery will be sent to recycling, you will have 22 kilowatt hours that are never used. 
So that's another way to look at the waste uh, point that I made earlier. I am guilty as well. I have bought acceleration boost for my long range Tesla Model 3. And do I think that's a good thing to be able to buy a software upgrade on a car when I know that the motor is capable of uh, actually the 0 to 60 time that I'm paying for already? Well, from my point of view, it's kind of stupid, but it's also good in some other senses because you can think about it as if Tesla made, for example, 500,000 performance drive units. Should they split it in two, the production, make a weaker one and a more, um, more performance oriented one, 250,000 of each? Well, that might end up being actually more expensive than making 500,000 of one unit and making that unit the performance oriented one and then offering a software unlocked capability. And that might be cheaper for Tesla because of mass production. Mass production reduces costs. I'm not expert in mass production, but I do know that quantities reduce the price uh, of the product. And uh, even though you might use uh, more expensive materials to create a performance drive unit, those costs will be reduced as uh, the quantity goes up as well. It's not always cheaper to create a cheaper product if you need to create it in lower quantities. So that's an important point for, uh, for Tesla's part. And then you might ask, can't you just get the full performance in the long range? Well, sure, I would like that, but for Tesla, they need to differentiate their products. They need to have price brackets. They need to like work on uh, being competitive in the different segments. And if everything has the performance of the performance, why buy the performance? So, so they need to differentiate the products and software is an easy way for them to do so in terms of costs, in terms of time, they can be very agile and be very fast with new changes and stuff like that. Some consumers feel like they are tricked when they buy a product and you don't get the entire capability of the hardware products. That because it's very much, it's easier for most humans to just look at a physical product and think about it like that. But now that the world is changing, everything is, uh, is, uh, is changing around us in terms of software products and stuff like that. I think maybe a lot of people have changed their mindset about it and think that, okay, it's okay to have stuff locked behind the software instead. And um, yeah, it's a very interesting uh, point and I think it can go the wrong way very fast. Um, I don't necessarily think it's a completely good thing, but I can see the benefit for, uh, uh, for Tesla, of course, but that doesn't really matter to the consumer. So yeah. It's, it's difficult and I would like to have your input on it. So if you are on YouTube, leave any comments and I'll uh, look, look through the comments and uh, see if uh, I have anything smart to say in reply, because I don't know the answer. Thank you so much for uh, listening to this uh, podcast, either on YouTube, Apple Podcasts or Spotify or any other platform that you can listen to podcasts on. Please, leave any comments if you're watching on YouTube and please rate the podcast as well. And uh, I hope to talk to you later.